The Story of the Harlem Spartans The Harlem Spartans, a drill group that originate from Kennington, South London. The Kennington area is nicknamed Harlem, therefore the name Harlem Spartans. The Harlem Spartans started making music 2014 in a youth center they used as a music studio. Prominent songs from the group include Call Me a Spartan, Kennington where it started, and Lowski's songs Cool Kid, Hazards, and Forrest Gump, the latter of which entered the charts. In April of 2018, Lowski released his mixtape Call Me Loose. HS often had problems with Brixton-based groups but one gang they were known for beefing with was 410. The beef has time and time been shown in songs like Why So Chatty? By HS and the beef has more than once escalated physically. 410 member AM released the song Attempted 1.0, in 2018. The song contained many direct references to violence towards Harlem Spartans members. Skango and AM, members of 410, were later given a gang injunction from the police that banned them from entering Kennington or mentioning rival gangs in their music. Kennington has had beefs with the Brixton area way before the Harlem Spartans came about. Like I said Kennington and Brixton especially O.C. have beefed for a long time but it got intense about 15 years ago, and it is still till this day. A few of the members from Harlem went to school with 410 members before they started hanging out on the streets. Some of the members had no beef or affiliations and just hung around that block and were just friends who wanted to make some money on the block who later started making music together and created the drill group Harlem Spartans. Kennington was called Harlem for years because everyone was earning their money there partially because a lot of users live or hang around there. Although they didn't start off with B4 affiliations, since they were chilling and making money on that block they inherited the beef with 410 and 150 and have beefed with them ever since they inherited it and automatically got involved. The trouble started when the youngins from Brixton started joining 410. A couple of the Harlem youngins were originally cuckoo, some were Kennington Park but most of them were already close at this point and started making music as opposed to just hanging out on the block. Although HS inherited the beef with the OC, aka, 410 it didn't really get involved until late 2015. Miser Mac and AM were actually good friends as they went to school with each other but it changed later on. Lowski who was a member of HS, had a father who was involved with 150 so technically, Lowski was naturally a part of the 150s but later moved to Kennington so he was kind of on the fence on what side he was on, since HS was affiliated with 6-7 he was allegedly pressured to pick a side between Kennington and 150. The beef originates from different gangs starting to beef with each other such as Moscow 17 and Zone 2 who started to beef with each other, HS was good with the MS-17 and everyone was cool with each other from the beginning. Since Incognito and Trizak are related, the gangs were calm with each other. As time went they started having internal beef because of Midge and Ned who started getting into a fight and PS then robbed one of Lusa Cruz's relative and things were getting worse between these two gangs as members of each group started violating each other. Tizzy T and PS were good friends so Tizzy was trying to settle the beef between Lucicru and PS but PS turned on Tizzy D and stabbed him, leaving him in critical condition and almost died. His heart stopped beating but was revived from the dead. D 
These two incidents are what fueled the beef between Moscow 17 and Zone 2 and it ties in with HS as HS was good with MS 17 and after that started disliking Zone 2 and their affiliates, but not only that. 410 and HS was cool from the beginning but 67 who was also close with HS was beefing with 410 and pressured HS to pick a side or else they would turn against HS and they would also be in trouble with their own people in Cuckoo, who has been beefing with 410 for 10 plus years and 67 since 2012. A lot of people have been affected by the gang violence in London and as for the Harlem Spartans they lost two of their members. S.A., short for Splash Addict aka Lance was one of the Harlem Spartan members who were affected by the beef and gang violence resulting in the death of S.A. in Camberwell, South London, on July 25, 2018. The rumored story is that S.A. wanted to kill one of his oppositions with a gun and as he was going to shoot his op, the gun jammed which led to his op stabbing him, leaving him in a critical condition. He was allegedly with a member from MS-17 and had also allegedly called in Cog, but he didn't go with SA that day, which he was led to regret allegedly, there is a rumor he posted a snap where he said, when bro called me, I should have went, it's my fault. We don't know for sure if that is true but few sources seem to point out that that was the case, but the snap is nowhere to be found. After SA was stabbed. The guy he was with drove off with him on the way to the Camberwell Hospital, there was CCTV footage that caught a scooter driver with SA in Denmark Street, Camberwell. The scooter driver just left him by the street screaming for help and left as he was rumored to have panicked and dipped because he allegedly had firearms on him and was afraid of getting taken by the cops. So he left SA's fate to the people by the street. The driver yelled help. He's been stabbed and then rushed out of the scene. It took 10 more minutes before the ambulance appeared and rushed him to the hospital. A witness at the scene said this about S.A. The boy was hanging off the back of the scooter and the guy on front was screaming hold on, hold on. As S.A. fell off the moped, panicked witnesses ran over to help as they yelled at the guy rushing from the scene on the moped why are you, leaving them? S.A. was found by the residence chairman of the Crawford estate, Abu Kamara who stated this, I can't believe it, he just left him in the middle of the road. He obviously didn't want to get involved with the police and panicked. S.A. was stabbed five times, and had numerous stab wounds on his chest. Even though S.A. was rushed to the hospital, he died the morning after and if his friend didn't leave him it is a possibility he would still be alive today. The police arrested a 17-year-old as a suspect. It later turned out that the stabbing occurred on Minute Road, Camberwell. As he was found on the street people started CPR as he wasn't showing any signs of breathing, and police had arrived before the ambulance, and offered emergency life support. The hospital he was brought to was King's College Hospital where he was pronounced dead 12.22 am, there is a rumor that the guy S.A. was trying to shoot was J. Bands, but has allegedly fled the country as H.S. wants retaliation for their bro, Lowski has allegedly put a bounty on his head and shootings around Brixton happened later that day, after S.A. died and the police believes the shots was towards 410 and 150 members. People believe that Jay Bands is in Ghana now, left that life behind and living with relatives, because so many people are after him, Cuckoo, 67, HS and last but not least S.A.'s father who is rumored to be associated with some serious people but his father doesn't live in the UK as his father got deported shortly after having lads, but is rumored to have put a bounty on J Band's head. S.A. died at his father's birthday and he made a tribute song named S.A., Dad Love You Son, which Con S. from 150 was smoking to on a snap that is now deleted making a mockery out of the whole thing. Incog who was allegedly called upon to follow S.A. on this ride out, also died a week after S.A.'s death.
A little more than one year after the death of Splash Addict, the Harlem Spartans were about to suffer another loss, one of the members with one of the most iconic lines in the UK drill scene. This who rapped, if gang pull up, are you gonna back your brethren? This died at the age of 20, 6th of December, 2019 and the murder was caught on CCTV. He suffered at least nine wounds to his head, back and chest and was surrounded by four guys armed with a knife. He was stabbed by two guys, Jediah Param, and Elijah Morgan, who got sentenced to 28 plus years for the brutal murder. Things went down allegedly because the guys he confronted had been disrespectful about S.A., who had died the year prior and Bis got upset, and asked them to apologize, but they didn't so he went to go see them, and solve the problem. They were supposed to link up at Deptford Creek, around 1.15 a.m., and as Elijah and Jediah sat on a cab, Bis was trying to assault them with a mallet, and probably hit them to death. The cab drove off, but the guys in the cab asked for the cab to stop, and got out of the car. Bis had allegedly dropped the mallet as the driver drove off. When Jediah, Elijah, and the two others got out of the car, they ran up to Bis who was with someone, and the two were surrounded by four armed guys, and Bis and his friend were unarmed. The situation was a losing one for Bis as the four guys surrounding him had the intent of killing him right there and then. The CCTV shows that the four guys were either stabbing or striking him. Bis fell to the ground, but got back up and tried to get away from there but got away from the CCTV, so it didn't catch what happened next, but it was allegedly clear that the injuries he had suffered, were fatal. Param and Morgan denied these charges, but was later sentenced to 28 plus years as Param and Morgan had run-ins with the law before, regarding violence and possession of weapons. His mother gave a statement regarding the loss of her son, who was not only a rapper but was allegedly about to attend university, he was intelligent and had the whole world in front of him, such a bright future cruelly cut short. Regarding Param and Morgan she also added, these cowards pleading not guilty and causing us to have to go through this horrifically detailed trial, on how they brutally and callously murdered my baby, refusing to acknowledge guilt or responsibility for their heinous crime, speaks for itself. They made me watch my son getting killed 15 times on the CCTV footage. An unfortunate end to a young man's life from the Harlem Spartans. Why would I be if I'm off with bricks inside, fam? You know I was smoking, man, for no reason, bro. Brother, so what happened to you? What are you in jail for? I'm in jail for Rico. I'm going to show you my No, what are you in jail for, brother? I'm in jail for Rico. What are you in jail for, brother? Rico, bro. Brother, what are you in jail for? Drop the bang in your face again. M. Man, go drop the bang in your face again. investigation for the M. Fuck your waist, man, fam. I repeat this, man. Two thousand and sixteen and two thousand and seventeen was a big year for the Spartans. As a group and music, they were one of the best in the country. But their affiliation to the streets got in the way of their music. Besides the two unfortunate losses of the group, the prison is a familiar place for the rest of them. Almost everyone has been jailed back and forth for a while, creating a big gap between them and their music. Loski has been in and out numerous times over the years allegedly for possession of weapons, knives and so on. The last arrest I've heard of was April 9, 2019. He was arrested in an Uber under a false name, 
and they found a revolver, that had allegedly possessed, and hid inside a sock. Plosky told the court that on 8th of April he had arranged to meet a cannabis dealer, he had contacted on Snapchat to purchase 14 grams of cannabis. He said he had purchased cannabis from the dealer, known as D, more than 10 times previously. He claimed that once he got into a car with the dealer, at a pre-arranged meeting place in northwest London, things started to go wrong, and he believed he was being kidnapped. Lowski told the court that the door of the car was locked and he panicked. He put a gun in my face, I was panicking a lot. He said he knew where I lived, and where my mum lived. With a gun in your face there's not really a way out of it. He told the court the dealer told him, I need you to hold something for me, and handed him a gun wrapped in tissue, which the dealer told him he had to hold on to until the next day, before delivering it to a drop-off point. Ms. Ramak, is also another member that's been back and forth in jail, he and Blanco was arrested 2017 for possession of a revolver, who was fully loaded, and had allegedly fired two rounds and also found them with the possession of a samurai sword. Ms. was sentenced to six years for the possession of firearms, and an offensive weapon at a public place. The reason why they were in possession that day is claimed to be because Ms. wanted retaliation for an attack by the Stockwell youths. Blanco pleaded guilty to the same charges, and was sentenced to three years and six months, but Ms. or Mac only served three years in Blanco, one year and three months. Ms. only got charged for possession of a firearm with no intent to endanger life, so he only got three years or else it would have been ten plus years. Ms. got out early 2020, but was recalled later, the same year in December for violating his probation. He was allegedly lurking for his opposition, and is rumored to still be looking for retaliation, but why he was recalled isn't known for a fact. He wrote on his snap that it wasn't a full recall, so he would be back soon, when exactly is unknown, but he promised to be more consistent and unstoppable, and ended by thanking his supporters. Ms. Ormac, and Super Savage was also allegedly charged with attempted murder, in a chicken shop in Brixton in 2016. Ms. won the case anyways and it was after that his career took off. Gigi, has been sentenced to 5 years and 8 months in prison, and Scratcho was caught as well for allegedly possessing a shotgun and discharged the weapon and it accidentally triggered towards the police force, and the police chased Scratch and GG. They tried to escape on a moped, and was chased by the police, but they eventually crashed, and got caught. As GG was caught they found body armor on him, and two knives. GG was charged with possession of firearms, offensive weapons, and bladed articles, and Scratch got 10 years for possessing firearms, with intent to endanger life. T-Trap, another member of the Harlems, but does not rap got 21 years for murder, he and Blacka both got sentenced to a minimum 21 years in prison for murdering Key Valley, the manager of Smugsy Ace. Key Valley had personal beef with the Aylesbury twins. And on Instagram, Key Valley posted a video of one twin getting violated, Blacka got the drop on Key Valley, and called one twin, but he didn't pick up. He then called T-Trap and they both rolled to Camden to slide on Key Valley. They caught Key Valley, as he was directing a music video on Camden Street, and stabbed him to death, showing no mercy, needless to say Blacka, and T-Trap will be locked up for a while. Andrils, is another member who was in prison for possession of bladed articles, and got 5 years, but has already been in for a while so he'll hopefully be out soon.
one of the bigger rappers in the group who got a big sentence, is TG Million and got sentenced to 12 years in 2017 for stabbing an op after a car chase, he allegedly stabbed blacks, from 410. Even though DG has been inside, he has still been able to release some videos up to social media, from his cell, with one song called, Spartan Stuff amongst others. In a separate video posted from prison, in April, Million plays a preview of a new Harlem Spartans track, called Number 410 What Where, which contains threats of attacks, against the Brixton Gang 410. It is claimed that TG after the car chase, broke the window and stabbed blacks repeatedly, in Denmark Hill, leaving blacks in a critical condition but survived the attack. Burner who was inside the prison as well, has retaliated with diss track from behind bars, and released it on YouTube. Burner and another guy allegedly jumped him in prison, he got beat up pretty bad as revenge for blacks, but TG got beat up for sure but who it is isn't a known fact, but only claimed rumors and makes sense all things considered. The Harlem Spartans are one of, if not the biggest drill groups in UK drill history, but their story has been unfortunate with two big losses, in their gang and many of them consistently going in, and out of jail, it is unfortunate that the music didn't go further, but hopefully the members get their things together, and focus in their music the potential is too big to just let it slip away, this is everything from today, thanks guys for watching, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back with more soon enough. This was the story of the Harlem Spartans, R.I.P. Bis, and Lats.